Sounds good. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, first of all, I just wanted to introduce kind of what we're here for. Um, so this is the first ever Tappy Press virtual book launch party. We decided to do it this way because, of course, a lot of our events won't be in person this year. So we're going to try to do a virtual release of what the book's about and uh, why we released it. So we have two of our editors here. So I'll start out by introducing myself. I'm Kristen Whitman, the Tappy Web Content Manager. I'm very happy to be joined today by Jim McNamara, the global editor of the Film Extrusion Manual 3rd Edition, which was recently released by Tappy Press, and Warren Durling, one of the book's 14 chapter editors. Thanks for joining me today, gentlemen. Yep, glad to be here. Glad to be here. I'd also like to thank our virtual audience, um, who I'm sure is coming in right now, who are joining us on Facebook Live. You know, you are busy and we appreciate you taking the time to join us today. We'll be giving away a free ebook at the end of this live. So please like, share, and leave any comments on this post so that we can include you in the drawing. If, you have to, if we have time at the end um, as well, as we, if we have time at the end of the session, we might be able to answer some of the comments that you've added onto our Facebook um, here with Jim and Warren. So I'd like to go ahead and get us started by introducing our two guests. So Jim is a senior packaging engineer with Foster Farms. He has nearly 30 years experience in the packaging industry on both the converter and end user side. He's been a TAPI member since 1999. And Jim is the incoming chair of TAPI's International Flexible Packaging and, and Extrusion Division. And I do apologize in advance. I know sometimes it can be weird to uh, listen to your own bios when I'm sitting here talking to you, but wanted everybody to know who we were talking to before we got started. So we also have Warren, who is an Associate Research Fellow for Clorox Service Company in the GLAD division, working on various consumer food storage and trash bag products, including GLAD zipper bags, GLADware containers, and press and seal adhesive wraps. He is currently responsible for packaging design and implementation across the GLAD portfolio of products. Warren has 40 years experience in the industry and has been a TAPI member for 29 years, serving various roles in the flexible packaging division, including division chair, he is currently the product resources team leader for IFPIT. So without further ado, Jim and Warren, thank you both for joining me today. Appreciate it. Hello. Good to be here. What our purpose of this um, meeting and Facebook Live is for you guys to get to know Warren and Jim a little bit more and for them to be able to tell you firsthand about the book and how the process worked, putting it together and editing it and so on and so forth. So I'm gonna to try to do uh, a little less talking for the rest of this, uh, this session and just kind of be your host and ask questions to the both of them and let them uh, uh, answer any questions that we hope you might have as well. So I would like to start the questions by um, asking for you guys to tell, um, tell us about the film extrusion manual. Do you already have an elevator pitch for it? If so, let's hear it and convince me why I should read it. Well, basically, it's a compilation of materials, processing equipment around the extrusion process and has many new advancements in technology that have taken place since the last edition in 2005. 15 years is a long time and a lot has changed and happened since then and it captured the new edition. It's basically a must, it must, uh, must see book for anyone in the industry. And it's really about quality and diversity of content. It's just amazing how much is in this book everything, and Jim will get into it, everything from resins to equipment to processing and all the little nuances of that. For those who aren't familiar with the film extrusion process, what are the main applications for this technology? Um, think everything from the plastic film you put down when you paint a floor or paint a wall to potato chip bags, um, trash bags, to plastic food wrap, pallet stretch wrap, to medical packaging. It's really any kind of flexible film is covered in one way or another in this manual. About processing, about materials, um, quality control, troubleshooting, the entire gamut. Wow. So what are the main updates to technology um, or the film extrusion process that are converted in the new third edition as opposed to the, the older versions of the text? It pretty much has updated virtually every aspect of the process and materials that were in the original manual, in addition to adding a, a number of new sections. The, the new sections actually included plasma treating, 
adhesive lamination process, metallizing of film, and we expanded the sections on quality control and troubleshooting techniques for various aspects of the process. There's also a great section on structure writing, which breaks down the terminology used in, in the industry in general. And a lot of the content in this manual was somewhat, let me say, some of the new content in the manual was a follow-up on how we did the extrusion coding manual. So Jim took the existing manual and looked at what else we had done and said, where can we expand it? And we created a thick book. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like we can see a couple of them in the background here of y'all's y'all's frames. But yeah. um <laughs> Who would you say is the uh, the target audience for this particular manual and um, who should have it sitting on their desk, much like you two do? Mainly converters, end users, manu resin manufacturers, at all levels of the organization. Uh, it's basically, it is basic to advance information in all areas of extrusion, materials, equipment, and processing. Get up research and development, product control, operations, marketing, et cetera, um, to understand the nuances of the subject as well as the ancillary process related to the extrusion process. It's a great resource for engineers and operators, newer to the industry, and also presents an in-depth technical knowledge for seasoned individuals in the industry. Pretty much all encompassing it from beginning to end, from the newer people in the industry to the more experienced. And to expand on that a little bit, the FPED division kind of looks upon itself as being a teacher, a training place, um, whether it be our short courses or our conference or our publications. And we really build these manuals, um, as Jim said, to cover everything from the basics for somebody that's new into the industry and at the same time have depth of detail and technical information that even the most experienced people will reference. And you'll find an awful lot of engineers in this industry that have got these manuals sitting on their desks or in their shelves just because of that. That sounds like it's all encompassing for sure. Well, um, as I kind of mentioned earlier, uh, Warren, you're one of the 14 chapter editors and, and Jim, the global editor. So it seems like this was much of a uh, group project, right? Yeah, it was basically a compilation of the 50 different authors and contributors who worked collaboratively within the products and resources team of the IPET division, uh, along with TAPI, of course. Uh, we had monthly meetings to keep on track and, and made sure it was completed in a timely manner. And, and timely, I mean relative, because it did take three years to get it done. Um, I would say that it was a long three years, but it was very fruitful and, and, and um, fun three years for that matter. And Tappy, the individual Tappy, specifically Marianne, did a great job in keeping us in line and, and, and Christy as well uh, was involved pretty, pretty extensively from the whole process. Yeah, that's a valid point that regardless of the volunteers, something like this does not happen if you don't have the support staff. Um, at the taffy level to keep everybody in line. That's for sure. And, and just in perspective, Jim did a heck of a job on this. Was it only took him three years. I think the one we did before this, I think it must have felt like it was a lifetime. But from the time we started thinking about it, I think it was probably more like five years to get the extrusion coding manual done. So I applaud Jim for his efforts. Yeah, absolutely. I actually got, I got to say, Marianne did a great job in keeping things on track for sure, though, um, from, tap, from the Tappy side of things. I actually talked to her probably near the end, probably on a weekly basis to try to keep everything finalized. Yeah, with 50 contributors and, and 14 editors, and I couldn't imagine keeping everybody in line. I could, gosh, that's, uh, that's awesome that it happened within three years. That seemed kind of long, but in the big scheme of things, kind of short with all those contributors. So with that being said, I mean, there were 50 contributors to the book. Uh, do you guys have some of the companies that they represent that you wanted to talk about? Yeah, that's a very unfair question. <laughs> um, part of what makes this special 
whether it be this manual, whether it be the division, are the friends and colleagues that you make. I know personally, there are some people I work with um, within the division that I think I've worked with almost my entire 40 year career. So no matter how many companies I name, hopefully they're not watching. Somebody's gonna get ticked off that I didn't mention their company name, but um, generally all the resin companies have participated. Nova, Chevron, Phillips, ExxonMobil, Dow Chemical, Westlake, um, a lot of equipment people, um, ITW Pillar, Sam North America, North Mechanica, Chlorin, um, NDC Technologies, Davis Standard. Um, you know, just it's a real long list of the industry people. Lion Dev Basel is another um, resin company. Cell Plast Metalized. Charter NEX Films, they're more on the converting side. Um, Clorox, obviously, and Jim's company supports it. So that, that's generally the types of people that are participating. Awesome. So the Tappy books are peer reviewed, uh, much like our conference proceedings, uh, as well as Tappy Journal. But how would you say these peer reviewed how does that affect or, in other words, benefit the project as a whole? I say overall, I mean, it was very beneficial is it, you know, it basically allowed any potential mistakes from getting published due to typographic errors and their publisher layout issues. I would say that every section was read at least, at least by two other people, meaning peer reviewer and the section editor, in addition to the copy editor for accuracy, correctness, and, and readability. Um, the final version was then read again at least two more times by my, myself and um, the section editors their individual sections. I mean, it didn't guarantee there was no mistakes that made it through, but it greatly reduced the likelihood. Um, it made sure it was the accuracy, the correctness, the readability, the layout wasn't screwed up. And we found a lot of mistakes, um, corrected them, of course. Uh, and I'm sure there's going to be some we, we found actually two since it's been published as well, minor ones, but still. Um, so it, it would have been a lot more, let's put it that way. So I think it was. Great job, everybody who contributed that part of it, uh, but it was a very necessary process. Yep. Another piece of that too is that Tappy has commercialism guidelines that we like to follow, especially within our conference, but within our publications as well. So I think part of what the peer review team, small piece, but a little bit of what they're looking at is, is this author, truly doing a technical presentation or is it more of a sales and marketing paper? And there have been a few over the years that have gotten a few rewrites because of that. So to Jim's point, we like to think it's consistency across the publication is what we get out of it. Yeah, I would definitely need some. some we probably ought to mention Scott was kind of the head honcho on this, wasn't he? in the peer review on yours? I know he was on mine. Um, he Scott, was, did, uh, Scott did a lot to it. I don't think he was, he was like, he was not the head honcho, but he was actually, okay. he was a regular literally involved. Yes. We tend to call out Scott Marks at Dow anytime we talk about these things because he's so involved in these publications, so. He did a lot of the review for us, I'll say that much for it. <laughs> Great resource. Yeah, peer reviews is always well with that. That many folks working on one on one project, I can understand how that would be definitely beneficial and make the the process even longer. I'm just I'm just still surprised that it only took, you know, probably for you guys, like you said, three years seemed like a lifetime, but that's that seems fairly fairly quick to me. Um, so that's that's awesome. But so Warren, you are the global editor for of the Extrusion Coding Manual. Um, also, uh, fifth edition, also published by Tappy Press. Were you able to, op to offer any words of advice to Jim for this? Yeah, I absolutely did. Um, I, I'm, since I'm the team lead on the products team, it kind of, these manuals fall to me to start with, to kind of figure out how we're going to handle them. And the extrusion coding manual, I ended up with that kind of by default. 
mostly because nobody wanted it um, or didn't want to take it on. And I actually asked around on this one and Jim raised his hand. And I think the conversation was like, no, don't do it. Or are you sure you really want to do this? Um, but Jim had been involved, as he said, in extrusion coding manuals. So we kind of knew what he was getting into. Um, luckily, we had fixed some problems with the whole process of publication when we did the ECM. So I'd like to think that Jim had it just a little bit easier this time around. Not sure he'd agree, but- I, def I definitely did. <laughs> I, I think the real advice on something like this, and we haven't used the term yet, but it very much is an effort of hurting cats. It just is. And whether it's at Jim's level as a global editor, or whether it's at the TAPI level, it's just a coordinating effort bar none. So that's, be prepared for it and know what you're getting into. Yeah. And this was your first time editing a book, right? Or being the global editor? Well, I was first time being a global editor, but as Martin had mentioned, I had to work on the extrusion coding man as a section editor under, under Warren, who was the global editor. So I got to know the general process, you know, what was involved with the project. Uh, and I did volunteer, like he said, so. Um, I will say that being the global editor just made it a lot more intensive since instead of coordinating just in one section, it would be about all the sections. Um, I've actually personally read the manual at least twice throughout the review process, which took many hours, just in addition to providing the feedback on the various, to the various authors on, on what I read. Um, so it was a rewarding experience, but very time consuming. <laughs> um, I don't know if I really realized how much time it was going to take. Um, we knew it was going to take a lot of time, but it took a lot more time than I guess at the end of the day I expected, as well as a lot more time than my wife expected at the same time as well. So, um, but it was a good time. Uh, and Warren did a great job in, in, in being there for any questions or answering anything, I, any feedback or things, the direction we should go or things that he'd learned from the first process. That actually made it a lot simpler from my, from my side of things. Right. So I think about it this way, you get your name on the front of the book. Yeah. <laughs> Show that to your wife and say, look, I'm published. Yeah, but that was one of the mistakes. My name was spelled wrong on the cover. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> well, it didn't have junior on it. It's junior every other place, but except the cover. <laughs> I didn't even notice that. Nobody, I didn't either, except my wife did. <laughs> That's funny, because I told them not to put my name on the front of the extrusion coding manual. I put it on the inside for something like that. It's like, just in case. Yeah. Oh, well, live and learn. So I guess this is kind of for both you guys. Um, so maybe other than having your name misspelled or or, or on the front or, or Junior forgotten, uh, what would either of you say would be was the most rewarding aspect of working on this project, this film extrusion manual that took a long time and like you say, was kind of a, a large process and having to work with 50 different people, 50 plus people and kind of, as you say, you know, we say herding, herding cats. What would you say was the most rewarding aspect of all of it within the end? Um, what would you say? I'd say from my side of things, you know, the great people I got to work with put the thing together in a collaboration effort of everybody, you know, involved to finally get it actually published uh, was probably the most rewarding thing, you know. It'll be around for many years to care about this great research for the industry. So it just, it was a great rewarding experience that, that you be able to see what you did in for many years to come. Yeah, I, uh, you know, kind of second that. The TAPI and the IFBED division and the whole, all our conferences, this manual, everything, as I said, I think real early on, it's about the people you work with. And to me, that's really, some of the most rewarding parts of this is being able to work with people that you've known for a long time, in a lot of cases, their personal friends, and be able to put something out there that the industry needs, that it's going to use, and it's going to be around for a long time. So it's a, you know, a little bit of legacy, very little, but a little bit. Yeah, so... I, I would say, I guess, um, the million dollar question to kind of wrap this thing up before we start looking into maybe some of our comments that we've gotten on our Facebook Live and maybe being able to answer a couple of those um, within the last few minutes here. So the million dollar question would be, um, would you work on another project like this one? Oh, I would. 
Yeah, I would. Uh, I would just say, I would go back to being a section editor as being the global editor, just because of the time commitment. Um, it was great to be involved, but that would be the honest way. That way I can also, I can still be involved, but also give whoever does do the global editor job, help them with any questions or, or feedback that Warren did for me. Um, it was a rewarding experience. It just it looked like a lot of time. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll adamantly say, absolutely, I would do it again. It, the, the trick there is, it takes us about a year or two to get something like this moving. In a year or two, I'm retired. <laughs> so it's like I can sign up for anything right now. And I have, I keep signing up for stuff knowing that I, you know, there's an event horizon out there now. But I recommend it to anybody, if you get an opportunity to do something like this, absolutely jump on it. Even if it's a small piece of the entire book, if it's not picking up a global editorship, get involved. I mean, that that's one of our challenges in the division. It's, and it's not just our division, it's happy and it's the industry. It's trying to get people involved. This is a great way to do it. Yeah, I think that's awesome. I think I, I love that plug at the end too. Um, yeah, it can be time consuming, but it's I feel like it would be well worth it. So it's I'm checking the time now. Uh, thank you guys so much. That was awesome. Uh, awesome conversation. So it's only 1120. So let me check. I am seeing that we have some some folks watching and liking and sharing on our on our Facebook here. So I'm looking for any um, I'm looking for any comments, any for you guys to answer, but what I'm seeing right now is just some folks saying that this is great, the, and the book looks great. It turned out very nice, and they can't wait to read through it. So we'll take those as, as good compliments, and, uh, and and you guys are off the hook, too. All, all the work you put into it in advance, you don't have any other questions to answer other than my, uh, my few that I had to rattle off to you guys. So we are going to, um, like I said at the beginning, we are going to give away a free ebook to the folks that were able to join us um, live and uh, listen to the conversation and able to like, share, or comment. So we did have a few. So I have got a random picker here that I am going to choose a name. And what I'll do is um, I will uh, announce it in the comments afterwards and uh, reach out to uh, who the winner is. So I guess. To kind of finalize it here, um, Jim and Warren, I just want to thank you for joining us today as we celebrate the launch of this, the third edition of the Film Extrusion Manual. And to our audience, um, uh, I guess it's a moment you've been waiting for. So I'm going to go ahead and pick the winner here and share my screen as well because we have a nice promo that we're doing for the book as well. So. Let me share this promo slide here so you're able to see it. Let's see. Almost. Almost. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try that again. Screen share, slide. There we go. So we should be able to see it. So yeah, so for joining us today, since you, you made it through with us um, and watched uh, the conversation that we had, we have this promo code uh, PARTY25 to save 25% on the Film Extrusion Manual 3rd Edition. And if you um, would like to learn more about the next upcoming virtual book uh, launch parties with authors and editors, you can go to tapit.org slash party, um, or you can learn more about the Film Extrusion Manual book itself and view the product page and uh, kind of ask us any questions if you, if you feel um, necessary. But without further ado, I'll uh, kind of let you uh, Jim and Warren, uh, let you go. If you don't have anything else you want to add before we uh, hop off this afternoon. Thank you very much for having us. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks so much. You guys have a great day. You too. Bye, everybody.